And that is why we are acting now to build a Canada that works for younger Canadians. A Canada where they can get ahead and where their hard work pays off. First, we're going to turbocharge the construction of new homes across the country. Second, we're going to make life cost less. And third, we're going to grow the economy in a way that is shared by everyone. Our country works best when our economy is growing and when more opportunities exist for every generation. To drive the kind of growth that will deliver prosperity for Canadians, we will use the budget I am tabling later this month to build on our efforts to increase investments, enhance productivity, and encourage game-changing innovation that will create well-paying, meaningful jobs and keep Canada at the global economic vanguard. Okay, we need uh, an AI podium that knows the height of the speaker <laughs> and can adjust. It's coming. Okay, it's coming. Tony says it's coming. I certainly would benefit. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I am so absolutely thrilled and delighted to be here today uh, to make a really, really important announcement. So thank you everyone. Thanks to the journalists who are spending a Sunday covering this. Um, but thanks even more to the truly brilliant researchers, the truly brilliant entrepreneurs who are here with us today. Um, I am proud. Uh, I'm proud of you. I'm inspired by you. I'm so grateful that you're doing this work here in Canada. So let me start by acknowledging that we're gathered on the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. I'm so glad to be home in Toronto today. Uh, we are in the community that I have the privilege of representing as a constituency MP. I am so glad to be here with the truly brilliant people at the Vector Institute. Um, it was just so inspiring uh, for me to have a chance to walk around and talk to some of the really smart researchers, some of the really brave entrepreneurs doing amazing things here. Um, in just sort of half an hour, I had the chance to talk to people who are doing work supporting patients with heart disease helping them to be healthier, to be less scared, not to have to go to the hospital to live longer. Um, and I was able uh, to talk to a patient who is benefiting from that right now. How wonderful. Uh, I was able to talk to people who are working on figuring out when patients should be released from hospitals. And I've learned that some of that technology is being used right now. And it helps people not be released too early so that we don't die. Wonderful, amazing that that work is being done right here. Um, I saw work being done so that robots can do chemistry experiments, freeing up researchers to think of those experiments. I saw some fantastic work being done on self-driving vehicles, self-driving trucks, um, some great work to help our utilities not have blackouts. So really, to everyone who is here, um, you are brilliant, you are inspiring, um, you are changing the world in terrific ways, and I'm just grateful to you for your time, I'm grateful to you for your work. And that's what I want to talk about. We are living in a pivotal moment for millennials and Gen Z. These young Canadians have so much talent and so much potential. They need to see and feel that our country can work for them, that the promise of Canada can still be reached. And we have a plan to help every generation of Canadians get ahead. And that is why we are acting now to build a Canada that works for younger Canadians. A Canada where they can get ahead 
and where their hard work pays off. First, we're going to turbocharge the construction of new homes across the country. Second, we're going to make life cost less. And third, we're going to grow the economy in a way that is shared by everyone. Our country works best when our economy is growing and when more opportunities exist for every generation. To drive the kind of growth that will deliver prosperity for Canadians, we will use the budget I am tabling later this month to build on our efforts to increase investments, enhance productivity, and encourage game-changing innovation that will create well-paying, meaningful jobs and keep Canada at the global economic vanguard. AI and the incredible opportunities it brings for the Canadian economy, for Canadian workers, is a key part of this effort. Since the 1990s, Canada has been a leader in artificial intelligence and deep learning. And that is thanks to innovators like the godfather of AI, Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, we've just heard about him, and Joshua ben -Gyo, as well as crucial early investments made by the Canadian government and provincial governments. We've heard about some of those from Tony a minute ago. But we can't rest on our laurels, and we know that. Today, we're seeing our allies, like the US, the UK, and France, make significant investments in their own AI ecosystems. We cannot and we will not take Canada's competitive advantage in AI for granted. We know that now is the time for us as a country to double down on AI to make sure with partners like the Vector Institute, like the brilliant people who are here with us today, now is the time to make sure that Canada stays in the lead. That's why I am truly, really, really pleased to announce that we will be creating a new $2 billion AI Compute Access Fund. Through this AI fund, we will invest in Made in Canada compute infrastructure to help support AI businesses and researchers. Compute infrastructure refers to the hardware and software systems that are specifically designed to support AI technology, like machine learning and deep learning research, which the Vector Institute specializes in. Currently, most compute infrastructure is in other countries which is a barrier for AI firms and researchers. Through the new AI Compute Access Fund, we're breaking through those barriers and ensuring that Canada is competitive in the global race to secure our AI advantage. Crucially, we're reducing Canada's reliance on privately owned computing outside of Canada. That comes with security risks. This investment in compute will encourage companies to invest and grow here in Canada, attracted both by our strong AI talent and research, which we so very clearly have here at the Vector Institute, and also by the underlying infrastructure that provides the backbone that literally powers this industry and this research. Our investment will help spur growth in AI in Canada, including in the building of, a of data centers. For too long, these facilities have been built abroad. We want Canadian researchers and companies to be able to use Canadian supercomputers. When it comes to this work, Canada has many natural advantages. We have abundant, and very clean electricity, and our government is investing to ensure we produce even more of it and that it is cleaner. We have skilled and experienced engineers to build the centers. We have the cold climate needed to help cool the supercomputers. We have the space 
to house these large facilities, and we are geographically close to the world's largest markets, which have vast data processing needs. This is an area where we can and must and will compete. Of this $350 million investment, $200 million will go towards supporting the adoption of AI across critical sectors like healthcare, agriculture, and manufacturing. For example, healthcare workers could use AI to improve the accuracy and speed of diagnoses, something I learned about today, work that is happening right here, right now. $100 million of this same investment will go towards helping small and medium-sized enterprises in all parts of the economy introduce AI into their businesses so they can use it for things like research, product development, and testing so they can become more productive, which will make it possible for them to pay their workers more. And $50 million will go towards protecting workers in industries where AI is having a big impact like e-commerce, finance, and even journalism through the Sectoral Workforce Solutions Program. The program will help workers learn new skills so that they can use AI to their advantage in their respective industries. Because we want AI, we need AI to be a tool that helps workers become more productive and therefore better paid, not something that displaces them. I know everyone here today agrees that the success of these investments depends on making sure that AI is used safely and responsibly. Our government's priority is to make sure AI is used in a way that improves productivity, creates great new jobs, and improves workers' lives by reducing repetitive tasks so they can focus on more challenging, more creative work. That's why we're investing $50 million to create a new Canadian AI Safety Institute. This institute will work to help Canada better understand and protect against the, risk, uh, the risks advanced AI systems could pose. These are really significant investments. Canada is staking our claim as a global leader in AI today and for years to come. We are building on really forward-looking investments this government has made, and we're doing even more because we know that this is an essential part of Canada's economic future. We're acting now and acting with purpose because the cost of inaction today would be borne chiefly by younger Canadians. We would be leaving them behind. And we will not. We simply cannot do that. Instead, we will help them realize the promise of Canada with a responsible plan that creates new career opportunities and grows the economy for every generation. This investment in AI is absolutely central to our economic plan to unlock the promise of Canada for young Canadians. Because to become more prosperous, we as a country need to become more productive. And AI is a powerful tool to do just that. And becoming more productive means higher salaries and more prosperity for everyone. Canada is a research leader in AI. Our government is investing to ensure that we are also a leader in cutting edge AI companies and in AI adoption across the economy. This is an essential way to address our productivity challenge, and it builds on Canada's significant existing strengths. Our renewed focus today is unlocking the door to the middle class for millions of younger Canadians. In all we do, we dedicate ourselves to making a better life within reach for our younger generations. Because that is what you deserve, that is what you have earned. And it's what your parents and grandparents want for you too. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer your questions. 
Thank you, Clara Pasika, CBC. Thank you for all of this uh, about a AI. We have some questions about a, a diff diff different topic, uh, Minister. So first, some, some Jewish people with family and friends taken as hostages by Hamas are gathered up the street this afternoon calling for the safe release of their loved ones. What do you say to those calling for Canada to do more to help get them released? Um, as the Prime Minister said today, Canada's priorities are to have the hostages released, to have a ceasefire, and for the humanitarian aid that people urgently need to be delivered. That is what we are working for every single day. And, you know, my heart, given your specific question, um, I have spoken to Canadians who had people they loved who were held as hostages. It's terrible. Um, it's really heartbreaking. And, of course, um, it's so important that all the hostages be released and that Canadians who have those incredibly painful personal connections to the hostages know that I think all Canadians support them and grieve with them. A Palestinian group is calling for a two-way arms embargo, saying Canada b buying or supplying arms to and from Israel is wrong. Where do things stand for Canada on arms to and from Israel, and what would it take for your position to, to shift it all there? I have nothing new to announce, and I'll just say, as the Prime Minister said today, um, our priorities are a ceasefire, the release of hostages, and it's so important that humanitarian aid get through. People are suffering, people are dying. Thank you. Next question, prochaine question. That concludes today's press conference. This is conference of press. Okay, I'm gonna just say one thing to the journalists who are here, two things. So one, thank you very much for being here. Um, I know that it is a Sunday, um, and it is such a beautiful day, maybe the most beautiful first day of spring for us all, so I appreciate your work. Um, and if you get a chance, um, do please uh, consider talking to some of the researchers and entrepreneurs who are here. Um, they're incredibly impressive. I think the brain power that was on that floor that I walked through, I don't know, it could probably power I'm, I struggle. I struggle for the appropriate metaphor. Basically, they're incredibly brilliant, incredibly brilliant, incredibly dedicated, incredibly creative, hardworking people who have come here on a Sunday. They are doing things that will transform the world, will transform our country. I am really proud of them. I'm proud they exist, and I really hope that we can together help them tell their stories to Canadians because it is an incredibly optimistic, hopeful thing, the work they are doing. Thank you very much.